A uh, couple right. of those yellows, oh, glad we got you, John, uh, flipped green, right? Uh, rate of change for S&Ps, and uh, you had another one in there, right, Brett? Yeah, the two that turned back this morning. So if I was looking at this live, which we don't, it's an end of the K, end of the day indicator. The only one that would still be in red territory would be volume. But the other five, because of this huge jump that we've had this morning, it, um, have flipped back to green. Bigger picture, the model itself turned uh, you know, to positive on May the 3rd. So we're up 6% since May the 3rd. And then the prior signal before that was to buy on November 3rd of last year. So, but what happens when the market is unsure of what's going to happen next, you'll often see these indicators kind of move into balance and we call it blinking, right? It'll stay balanced for a couple of days, four and two, two and four, three and three. That's kind of what happened heading into the number. But obviously this explosion that we're seeing today has turned everything back to that May 3rd signal that we had, um, whatever, six weeks ago, whatever it's been. Okay, so uh, looking up, uh, five out of six, pretty good. I mean, I think I've only seen the Asbury six full green or full red uh, on a limited occasions over the years. So five out of six seems like um, about as good as you can ask for if you're bullish. Sure, I mean, it's a volatile situation. Uh, the market is not as certain as it appears to be today. If you look at some of the, we have a model called CEF, it's sector ETF asset flows, and it's been really showing erratic asset flows all year, where the top two in terms of our rankings might be something like utilities and technology, which you hardly ever see. And I think that's just an indication of, besides the explosions today, is that this year, since we had that big move uh, in January, where NVIDIA was up 100% or whatever it was, and AI just basically dragged the market up by its hair, uh, there's still a lot of uh, indecisiveness by managers as to uh, how long this can last and if it might be too far over its skis. Mm -hmm. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the market's going higher, the internals are strong, according to the Esbury 6, and the market could stay exuberant longer than we could stay solvent. So you just follow it. Sure, yeah. Uh, that's what you guys do a generally good job of is uh, catching the trend early and when it's uh, shifting and following it. Sector-wise, as we just looked there, only a few, it seems, uh, maybe still have a little bit of negativity in there. It seems like uh, the potential for uh, what has been concentration in the market then, uh, if we flip your green, uh, flip to green on your, uh, uh, Asbury six, there's, you know, there's a few sectors in here that, uh, maybe look a little bit soft, but do you think this kind of turns into more of a broader rally? Does it look like there's enough sectors to participate here outside tech? Not what I see. I mean, really? we update the model once a week. And again, for months, you're seeing like utilities number two and tech number one. And down at the bottom, you might see consumer discretionary the weakest and healthcare the second. So the deck is all shuffled upside down. So uh, I think with that, that's telling me that the market still isn't certain. There's a lot of churn going on under the hood. Like take a look at this, technology is number one and utilities, which is very defensive is number two. You take a look at the bottom, you know, consumer discretionary, which is usually an offensive sector, you know, that is the weakest sector on the board. So there's a lot of consternation internally as to how long this can last. There's a lot of stuff going on, right? There's interest rates and there's an election coming up. Uh, so just, uh, I don't, you know, this was a great day. Um, obviously, you know, it was a great number. It was kind of a sigh of relief for the market. Two of the things that drove us, if you look at a chart, is we had a huge move higher in Apple over the past two days. We broke a huge resistance level. We had a breakout this morning in Microsoft. And obviously, NVIDIA is just, um, you know, it's just been on a tear since the second week of January. So, I mean, those, the breath has been unspectacular, but those AI uh, stocks uh, are just really carrying most of the market in some ways, and I'm not saying we're going into some kind of a situation, an end result like that, but in some ways, this reminds me of the tech bubble. Um, smaller, obviously, in scope, but I mean, it feels like that to me. Yeah, uh, John, um, thinking about sentiment to that point, 
Uh, how do you measure that in a quantitative way to try and normalize things? You know, does because when you look at breadth, breadth would suggest that it's been so weak. Sentiments, you know, not that great. It's just in a few of those names. To your point. Yeah, well, I sent you a sentiment um, chart yesterday, and it's the investors' intelligence data. Yeah, we got it up here. Right. So what that is showing us is down in the bottom right, you see that the percentage of bears of independent research providers like us, um, they're down as least bearish as they've been in that 14 to 16 percent area since April the 12th. And if you go back across this chart, which goes back to 2010, you'll see the other times that we've been down in this area, 14 to 16 ish area. They haven't been the top. This is not a timing tool. You don't use this to try to time getting out of the market or moving into defensive places. But you can see each one of these red charts was showing you that you were starting to get towards the beginning of a, what I would call a significant move down, which could last a couple of months or more. That's where we are. Um, that doesn't mean, again, that you go short, but it's telling you that you're stretching the rubber band. You could see this in some of the standard deviation um, measures as well. 